Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us today. Our guest in studio today is Dr. Nathan Way, nationally known arthritis expert and consultant, a graduate of Swarthmore College and the Jefferson Medical College, completed his residency at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and his arthritis training at the National Institutes of Health in Bethesda, Maryland. He's also a former consultant to the National Institutes of Health, and he's with us to talk about stem cell therapy treatment for osteoarthritis. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Dr. Way. Thank you, Neil. Uh, Osteoarthritis, how does it differ from the other common forms of arthritis that we're so used to hearing about? Well, actually, osteoarthritis is the most common form of arthritis uh, and and is the one we typically think about. It affects anywhere from 30 to 50 million Americans. Uh, And unfortunately, until... uh, Let me first describe what it is. It's a a wear and tear disease that affects cartilage, the gristle that caps the ends of long bones, and uh, affects primarily weight-bearing areas, uh, such as the low back, the hips, and the knees. Now, up until recently, all we've had are symptomatic therapies, uh, therapies that reduce pain and relieve pain. Uh, And and while that's admirable, uh, the real target, the cartilage, we have not had therapies that can help restore cartilage. But that is where we are heading right now. Now, you say we're heading toward therapies where we can actually replace or regenerate cartilage that has been worn down. Is that is that correct? That's correct. How far are we into this uh, research and development? Is this something that we can expect um, uh, doctors such as yourself to be um, advising us on when we go and talk about our joint pain? Uh, yes. Uh, as a matter of fact, we're already conducting clinical trials in, in the use of, of uh, adult stem cells to treat osteoarthritis of the knee. Stem cells. Uh, you know, lots of, um, in recent past years, more uh, than recent years, controversy over stem cell research. Um, and you say adult stem cells. Are these stem cells that um, you, you voluntarily uh, give up for this particular procedure or... Is it something that you can do in anticipation down the line and have them stored? How does it work? Yeah, there are two basic types of stem cells, the embryonic ones that you mentioned, um, and uh, which are pretty much fraught with controversy. And then there are the adult-derived stem, stem cells. These adult stem cells can be uh, obtained either from the patient themselves, uh, from bone marrow or fat. Uh, those are the two most common areas donor stem cells from healthy donors, and uh, the final type, what are called induced pluripotential stem cells. These are stem cells that have been manipulated in the laboratory. Uh, uh, These are adult stem cells that that have been manipulated in the laboratory to behave like embryonic stem cells. Hmm. Is this a, a manipulation of DNA to, to, I guess, send a different message to these stem cells in order to get them to act like embryonic stem cells? And if that's the case... How do you ensure that they continue to behave in that way down the line? Yeah, the technique itself is is uh, fairly complicated when it comes to the induced pluripotential stem cells. And that's why we're probably several years away from actually using them. I think right now uh, the uh, areas where people are most interested, researchers are most interested in, and particularly uh, people like us, clinical investigators, are are the uh, adult stem cells obtained from either the patient or healthy donors. Now, do these healthy donors, do they have to have the same, uh, uh, I guess, DNA makeup, uh, being a relative, close or otherwise? Or is it simply someone who's healthy enough to donate, such as, you know, a plasma donor or a blood donor? Uh, primarily a healthy donor, and uh, the reason is is that when you get stem cells from a donor, uh, a stem cell is a cell that is per- pretty much bl- a blank slate cell. Uh, it can be turned into anything you want, mm. so that you don't really have to be that concerned about, uh, say, rejection, for example. Um, so that's what makes the donor, the healthy donor stem cells attractive. 
uh, is this stem cell research, uh, even in its infancy in, in clinical trials, is it something that's promising for uh, multiple types of arthritis um, that, are, that fall in that osteo category? Um, we actually uh, conducted uh, and completed a clinical trial recently in the use of donor stem cells to treat rheumatoid arthritis. So there is interest in the use of stem cells for different types of arthritis. The one that, that I think is most important, of course, is osteoarthritis because it's so common. Uh, so that that's where most of the research is. Now, as the author of, of many, many articles, are your articles more geared toward research professionally already or get some of this information into our schools so that it can be perfected in the, uh, in the professional world? Or is it a combination of the two when it comes to writing articles? Um, articles are, are, are pretty much divided into two categories. They're the academic articles uh, that we've written that, that are primarily geared uh, towards publication in scientific journals. The other types of articles we write are educational articles to keep people abreast of some of the new techniques and developments in stem cell research. Do you find that some of this is creeping into universities in some of your talks and lectures or even some of your media appearances? Are you hearing uh, rumblings that some of these new techniques are being considered uh, in some of our colleges for some of these kids coming out? Um, there's, there's really good basic stem cell research being done at a number of uh, teaching uh, institutions. Uh, mostly in animal models so far, uh, but we do, we have had some clinical trials involving uh, human volunteers who have significant osteoarthritis in the knee. Do you ever um, find that a combination of, say, stem cell therapy and regenerative treatment is performed? I think that's pretty much where research is heading right now because, you, you know, you have this blank slate, slate cell, the stem cell, and you need to make it work. So adding different types of growth factors and other things that will uh, trigger stem cell multiplication and differentiation is, is, I think, going to be very important. Well, I'm, um, I'm hoping that you'll come back and speak with us in some future segments, Dr. Way. It would be my pleasure. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, and we've been in studio talking with Dr. Nathan Way, an arthritis expert and consultant. He's been here with us talking about some of the latest uh, stem cell therapy uh, treatment research into um, osteoarthritis. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Get copies of the audio and transcripts of this program at healthprofessionalradio.com.au and also at hpr.fm, and you can subscribe to this podcast on iTunes.